Well, welcome to this video where I'm going to be showing you how to get started making a Pac-Man game in Scratch, very much like the one that you see on the screen now. And um, we're going to be making this in Scratch 3. So if you've seen some of my previous videos um, for this series where it showed you how to do it in Scratch 2 and you're having some difficulty translating that to Scratch 3, then this is the series for you. So let's get started by loading up a brand new project in Scratch. So here I am in my brand new project and one of the first things I'm going to do is want to name this project so that I can know what game it is when I'm working on it later. So I'm going to name this one Pac-Man 2019 and um, now I can get rid of the cat sprite as well. So I'm just going to click on the little bin icon and that gets rid of the cat. And we need to create a new sprite for our Pac-Man. So if we hover over this icon here, go up to paint and click and it will create a new sprite that immediately I'm going to name Pac-Man so that later in my game I can refer to that sprite by name. Now, in order to draw our Pac-Man, we're going to start, we need to draw two states, one with the uh, mouth open, one with the mouth closed, and we're going to start by drawing the mouth closed first. We want to work in bitmap mode for this, so we're going to convert to a bitmap, and you'll see that things change ever so slightly. You've got fewer options on the screen. And we're gonna use the circle tool and we're gonna change our fill color. Now traditionally Pac-Man is yellow, but you can make him any color you like. And once you've chosen your color, if you see this point here, this is the center point, you wanna get your circle around that center point as close as possible. And if you click and drag, uh, you'll see that you can draw it as a squishy shape. If you hold the shift key while you're dragging, you will get a perfect circle. So I'm going to make a nice big circle for this and I'm going to move it so that it's pretty much in the center of my sprite. And there's one extra thing we need to do. We need to add a little dot. Um, I'm going to use a block for this of a different color. Um, you can make it any color you like as long as it's not the same as the background color for your maze when you come to draw that later. So I'm going to make it sort of an orange color. And you can just add this little dot, not too far away from Pac-Man, but just maybe just about there. And this is a detector block that's going to be used to detect when Pac-Man is colliding with walls. Um, so it's you might be a bit frustrated. You might think, well, that's a bit ugly. But when we make Pac-Man smaller, it'll be less obvious. And actually, you can also make it the same color as the background for the whole game. So not the walls of the maze, but let's say you've decided to have a black background. You could later come and color this in black so you can't see it so easily. Okay, let's name this costume closed because this is our closed state of Pac-Man. Let's right click, duplicate, and on the new one that's called closed 2, we're going to call this open. And now what I need to do is I'm going to zoom in slightly and we're going to use the line tool to draw lines um, where the mouth is going to be. Now it doesn't matter what color you choose for this as long as it's not the same as the yellow color or whatever color you've used for Pac-Man's body. Um, so I'm just gonna stick with the orange color I've got and I'm gonna draw a line out to the edge and another line out to the edge. And I'm just gonna zoom in and make sure I've really gone to the very edge of the of uh, the Pac-Man because I don't want to leave any any gaps. I might just make that a little bit bigger just to be careful. And if I zoom out a bit, I'm now going to use the paint bucket tool. I'm going to change the fill to this color uh, or this um, option here, which is actually transparent. And if I click now in that wedge, it will disappear. Now you might quite like the fact that you've got a slightly different color here, um, but I would like that to be the same as my original coloring. So to do that, I'm just gonna go back to my fill options. I'm gonna use this paint selector tool, color selector tool, and hover over my original color of Pac-Man. And that's now changed my fill color to match the body of Pac-Man. And if I go to my paint bucket again, zoom in and click in uh, my um, click on these lines, they will change to be the exact same color as Pac-Man's body. It's really important though that you don't make the um, the sort of detector block the same color as Pac-Man's body, otherwise our code won't work later on. 
Right, so that's made our Pac-Man with our two states, closed and open. Let's add some code to make that open and closing uh, mouth animated. So we're going to want this to start at the very beginning of our program, which happens when people press the green flag. So for that, we can go to um, Events, and I can choose when green flag is clicked. Let me zoom in a bit. So when the green flag is clicked, I want to begin a process that's going to see my mouth open and close, open and close, and uh, to do that continuously. And that's going to involve switching between these two costumes in a loop. So the loop that I'm going to use, if I go down to here, is I don't want it just to happen 10 times. I want it to happen always. So I'm going to use a forever loop, and I'm going to join that onto my when green flag is clicked button. So when I press the green flag, this loop's going to start, and whatever code I put in here will repeat continuously. And the code that I want to put in there is one to change costumes. If I go to looks, and I will, there's quite a few options for changing costumes, but I want the next costume. So it just rotates around between those two costumes. So let's see what happens if I press the green flag now. You'll see that Pac-Man does change costumes, but it's incredibly quick. We need to add some kind of delay, um, otherwise you'll never see the effect. So let's go back to uh, control, and you'll see that there's one that says wait one second. So let's put that in there. So it's gonna, in a repeated loop, it's gonna change costume, wait a second, and then do the next one. Wait a second, do the next one. Let's see how this looks by pressing the green flag. Well, that has created the effect, but it's a bit slow. So maybe we want to change this amount. And you might want to experiment, but I've always found 0.2 seconds to be a good amount. So we've created our Pac-Man sprite, we've got it animated with an open and closing mouth, and we've got our color detector block ready to detect our walls of our maze. All I'd like to do now is just add some code to make Pac-Man change direction when I press the arrow keys on the keyboard. So to do that, I'm gonna go back to events, and I'm gonna use this one that says when space key is pressed. I'll drag that over, but I'm gonna change this to be the up arrow, so when the up arrow key is pressed. And when that happens, I want to change direction of Pac-Man. So for that, I go to motion, because motion affects how the sprite moves, and I'm gonna use point in direction 90. Now 90 degrees points to the right, so I don't want that. I actually want zero degrees, which points upwards to north. So I'm going to say when up arrow is pressed, point north. And if I right click on this top one, I can duplicate both of those blocks. And now I can choose when down arrow is pressed. And I'm going to make that 180 or south. I'm going to right click duplicate again. This time I'm going to say when the right arrow key is pressed, point 90 degrees to the right. And duplicate one more time. When the left arrow key is pressed, drag that all the way around to minus 90. So we can test that by now using our arrow key. So up, down, left, right. And if I start my animation, you'll see his mouth moves as well. So I've now got my Pac-Man pointing in all four directions. And his mouth is animated. The only thing I might want to do now is make Pac-Man a little bit smaller. So here where I've got size 100, I can change that to maybe 20, and that gives me a smaller Pac-Man on my screen, ready to put into my maze, which is what we're gonna do in our next video.